Greetings, church. I greet all of you watching on Facebook and YouTube today. I'm sorry we couldn't meet together in person in the sanctuary. It's Saturday afternoon, and I'm standing in the slight rain ice storm outside of my house. I hope you're staying warm and safe and that you have power. We are glad to welcome you to worship on February 14th. This is Transfiguration Sunday and Valentine's Day. Welcome to worship at Slash Christian Church. I decided to come back inside to do some of these announcements. Remember, since we're live streaming today and couldn't meet at the church, I want you to prepare for communion, get some bread and something to drink so we can take communion together. And if you've planned to present offerings today, you can find a link to use Engage Online Giving on our webpage, www.cc.org, or you can mail your offerings to the church. The flowers today, which are locked up at the church and are not doing me any good at all right now, are given to the glory of God and in honor of my favorite Valentine, which is Michelle. Michelle, sorry we can't enjoy the flowers today. If you would like to bless our worship with fresh flowers in honor or memory of a loved one, call the church office next week, February 28th, and the last three Sundays in March are available right now. Now, don't forget you're invited to join us for our weekly prayer and fellowship time on Monday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. You'll find the link in every Monday's Slash Flash. And next time you're on campus, we want you to pick up several free pandemic kits. These are provided by Hanover County. They contain hand sanitizer and wipes. You can pick one up for yourself, a friend, take some to pass out to those in need or to share with a neighbor. You will also be able to get a pandemic kit at our drive-by Ash Wednesday service this Wednesday night from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. The weather looks good, so we hope you'll come and join us. The elders will be serving communion and praying with everyone who drives into the parking lot. I will also be sharing the ashes and the sign of the cross as we begin our Lenten journey toward Easter on Wednesday night. Come by any time between 5.30 and 6.30 and share in this drive-in, drive-by worship in the parking lot. We will have music and message on the radio, so plan to tune to 90.3 FM while you're here this Wednesday night. You can also watch the music and message on Facebook or YouTube. We have a video shared there inviting people to our Ash Wednesday service. Uh, you would also be welcome on Wednesday night to join in the virtual Bible study on Zoom. They're studying the Gospel of John. Read chapter 7 before. Remember, the link to join in the Zoom is in the slash flash every week. And next week, we'll begin the Week of Compassion. The Week of Compassion is more than a week. It's a ministry of the whole church, reaching those in need around the world, around the year. Anytime we respond to a need in the world, we bear witness to the unity of the Lord's table. We will receive this special offering starting next Sunday when you share your gifts to Week of Compassion. What you're doing is letting love flow. Your generosity ensures that even in the midst of uncertainty, the transforming power of compassion continues to change the world. Now, today, we return to the passages in Proverbs we've been studying. Remember, the book of Proverbs has 31 chapters. Solomon wrote 1 through 29, and chapter 31 was written by King Lemuel, in which he describes a wife of noble character. But Proverbs 30 is written by a guy that has been overlooked. His name is Augur. And in that chapter, you'll find the only prayer in all of Proverbs. And for some reason, that powerful, remarkable prayer is often overlooked. 
Today, we will study his words and pray the prayer of Augur. Again, thanks for being so faithful and for participating in our mission and ministry from home today. God bless you all as we begin worship. to hear God speak to you. And then 
Breathe in, breathe out. Let us pray. God, we are gathered, we are listening, we are eager for you to transform us by your presence in our midst. Open us to your way of touching us as we actively wait for your word. We're grateful for you and your shining light leading us on. Guide us now as we pray. Amen. Hi, everybody. I hope you all had a great week and a fun snow day on Friday. Uh, today, the story is going to be pretty short. It is starting our Easter stories, our Lenten stories. So let's sing our Be Still and No song and see our story for today. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I wonder what these could be. They're rough. And they're purple. You know what else was purple? The, that was the color when we were getting ready for, for Christmas. That was the color of Advent. I wonder if we'll be getting ready for something else coming up. Hmm. This Wednesday is the first day of the season of Lent on our Christian calendar. And that's the time of year where we're getting ready to celebrate the mystery of Easter. There are six Sundays in Lent. I wonder, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's six pieces of this puzzle wonder if I tried to put this puzzle together if it would tell us what Lent is all about. Look at that. What does that make? It makes a cross. So Lent is all about the cross. And we're going to learn how the cross came to be a symbol of Christianity and a symbol associated with Jesus. We're going to learn about how Jesus died on that cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We're gonna hear lots of stories along the way as we get ready for Easter over the next several weeks. Okay, I hope you all have a great week and I hope that we can get together in person next week and I can tell the story in uh, Big Church. Bye. Last Sunday, we considered Augur the prophet. We found out he was a list maker. And from other parts of chapter 30 in Proverbs, we found out that 
Uh, we should explore God's word and see what we can learn from the less famous biblical stories and characters we find there. Augur reminded us to seek and find God's purpose for our lives so that we can use our gifts and talents to bless others. And Augur helped us to appreciate God's indefinability. We'll never know everything about God, so we keep worshiping, studying, and seeking God. And today, We've saved the best, the prayer of Augur, the buried treasure in Proverbs 30. This three-verse prayer has a formula for trusting God and discovering God's will for our lives. You know what? Let's not just read it. Let's pray this prayer together. Let us pray. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Amen. Wow. I like Augur's strategy for prayer. Have you ever noticed that if you drone on and on with a long list, you start adding items that you really don't need, asking God for them? And plus, we can have a hard time tracking God's response. You can pray a thousand prayers and God hears them all. But I think Augur's example is an approach worth remembering. He boils down his prayer request to a small number of specific heartfelt desires. When you do that, you're going to find yourself more aware of God working in your life and delivering answers to you in your life. You know, Augur dares to pray for a life of moderation. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me my daily bread. Moderation, that's not uh, on anyone's checklist in the 21st century. Uh, we tend to hear bigger is better, more, 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 more activity, more responsibility. We gain things when we think of more. And there's also other people in this 21st century world where we're living in that are on the flip side. They are minimalists. Maybe you know someone who's trying to declutter their life, and they're thinking that less is more. Now, know this, Augur's not endorsing minimalism, and nor is he saying that wealth and influence define success. He endorses neither fast or slow, big or small, fancy or simple. He's identified a balance the perfect mixture of getting what you need and needing what you get. He sums it up when he says, give me only my daily bread. Now, when Augur wrote this chapter, all of the people who heard it would have instantly connected his prayer to 40 years in the desert. Remember the Exodus? Uh, manna appeared once a day provided by God in just the right amount at just the right time. And if you remember, that was their daily bread. If they gathered more than they needed today, it would spoil. God, though, provided it just at the right time, just as they needed it. There was a balance. Uh, and just think about it. If you get more than you need, life kind of goes off the rails and things get spoiled. Let's think about some examples. The amount of exercise you should get has a balance. The extreme is living at the gym and taking steroids. Or the other extreme is just kind of being a couch potato and not doing any exercise at all. Now there's work the extremes are not even getting a job and trying to live up to your potential. And the flip side is being a workaholic and missing all of family life. 
And how about your hobbies? Ask yourself, is your hobby an obsession that maxes out your money and leaves you cut off from the world? Or is it something that makes you a better person and something you can share with others? You see how important it is to find contentment, your daily bread, no more, no less. Your finances, wealth, relationships, activities, emotions, they all have a balance. Even with romance in marriage, a husband and a wife need to find a mutual balance to meet each other's needs. Augur's prayer for his daily bread. Now that was written down about a thousand years before Christ. Now today, when we prayed it, you may have recognized the phrase from the Lord's Prayer that Jesus prayed in his Sermon on the Mount. Give us this day our daily bread. Those words are important to all of us. Yes, Lord, you know, please meet our daily needs. The thing is, that's not what Augur prayed. He added to those words the word only, and that introduces an entire deeper level of trust in God. It takes a bit of courage to pray, give me only my daily bread. I think Augur identified his weakness. It was materialism, stuff. He knew that if he had too much, he would take the credit for having it for himself and think, I don't need God at all. And if he had too little, you heard it in the prayer. He said, I would steal and dishonor my God. Augur was wanting his cash flow to be just right. And this is a clear, way to live. Remember, money itself is not the problem. It was Augur's emotional attachment to the money that was the problem. The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And do you know how that verse ends? Uh, it finishes, some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. All of that is in 1 Timothy. That's right. Loving money will leave you pierced with many sorrows. Augur knew that. I want to applaud Augur's self-awareness. Awareness. He's praying in essence, Lord, keep me dependent on you. I have complete trust in you. That's the balance that Augur wanted to live in in his life. He was saying, God, I can't do life without you. And that's a lesson and a prayer we can emulate. We need to go and trust God like Augur, and we can find balance in our lives too. So here is your challenge. If you can dance, commit to being the best dancer you can be. If you can write, commit every word to the glory of God. If you can build, commit to building things that last. If you can plant, plant enough to share with others. If you can hug, hug more, hug tighter, hug the hurting people that need the love that you have to give. I hope that that makes sense because that's what I'm learning from Augur. You know, consider for a moment anyone you know, a friend or a hero, who excels at what they do. You're standing on the outside looking in. And when I see them, I'm thinking everything they do is effortless. How do they do that? Well, maybe it's because they're doing something that comes easy to them because like Augur, they are simply embracing their gifts. You know, whether they know it or not, most successful people have discovered the sweet spot God designed for them to live in. And now it's your turn. Open your eyes, your heart and your mind and soul to what you already know. Be who you are. Claim your title as the one person in the world uniquely designed to be you. And do what you do best. Do it with excellence and get ready to give God the glory. That's what we learn from the prayer of Augur. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I would like to encourage you to check your emails and the slash flash for joys and prayers posted by each other this week. 
We have had a few joys over the last week. Our church admin, Kathleen, welcomed Edwin, a new grandson, and Don and Helen welcomed a new great-granddaughter. We want to extend our prayers and sympathy to the family of Dana Bogger. Dana is Ed's brother. Keep in your prayers those living alone or homebound and those living in assisted living, like Doris and Buck, where COVID has had a tremendous impact of not having regular visitors. Keep Helen in your prayers as she awaits test results and Kirby in your prayers as she is having back problems. Also, keep Mary Lynn, Ted's daughter, in your prayers as she is home recovering from hip surgery. And keep all of those on the prayer list in your prayers this week. Let us pray. God, you are the God who can do all things. You reign over all. Power and might are in your hands. We celebrate with our friends and we pray for our friends and loved ones who need your healing touch. May your peace feel, fill their hearts and may joy shine. We pray that you fulfill their needs and use us to help them in any way that we can. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities we have to bless others. Help us to share and not be selfish. And God, Help us to discover new meanings in our prayer to you for our daily bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will feast at the table of the Lord. We will feast at the table of the Lord. Oh, oh, oh.
every year we remember when Peter, James, and John were with Jesus on the high mountain and Jesus was transfigured and they realized he was the son of God. It's a special Sunday called Transfiguration Sunday. And today is also Valentine's Day. For many of us, we've shared signs of our love already, cards, gifts, flowers, and special treats. But what more wonderful way is there than to share a moment now at the Lord's table on this special Sunday? The last Sunday we'll gather for communion before the beginning of Lent. It's a transition between seeing Jesus manifested during Epiphany and when Jesus is betrayed and crucified. Here at the table, we see the gifts of God's love in the form of bread and juice. Here we have signs and symbols of God's love made real through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Here we are invited to be a part of the beloved community where all are welcome. Let's break bread together now. Jesus took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat this and remember me. And then after they had eaten, he took also the cup and he blessed it and said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat and drink, do this too and remember me. Let's pray. God bless our time together as we come around the virtual table. We gather together in community wherever we are. And we ask you to come and be a part and take part at our table. Amen. It's in you.